So I found a kind of one bedroom apartment in Hollywood that was cool enough to like pull off as a studio and decide, do I want a bed in here or do I want a studio? But uh, yeah, so it was a hotel. So it was a very creepy looking like the vibey, you know, <laughs> it looked like a, you know, mental hospital, um, nice. which kind of works for a recording studio. For actual home, it was a little bit like, oh gosh, what have I got myself into? Welcome to Recording Studio Rockstars. I'm Lid Shaw, and this is the podcast created to help you become a rock star of the recording studio. Hello, rock stars. It's Lid Shaw, your host for Recording Studio Rockstars, taking you inside the recording studio. I created this show to introduce you to real world recording professionals to hear their stories and learn from their experiences so that you can take your recordings to the next level and be a rock star of the recording studio yourself. My guest today is Daniel Grimmett founder of songwritingteam.com, a songwriting and production company serving over 200 artists and brands in more than 20 countries. Daniel works with clients worldwide and has built a six-figure online studio and music production business that redefines what it means to be a recording studio in the age of the internet. Taking the songwriting team to the next level, Daniel has also created Anthemize.com, a curated collection of high-quality, customizable tracks from top producers to help make your songwriting experience painless and professional. And finally, for you rock stars, Daniel has created one of the coolest things I know of in the world of online courses. It's called How to Make Money Producing Music Virtual Recording Studio. Daniel took all of his success with songwritingteam.com and turned it into a detailed how-to course that takes you step-by-step from just getting started with no clients at all to potentially making over $100,000 a year as an online recording and music production studio. Now, I know a lot of you are recording yourselves, and that's totally cool. But if you are interested in recording for other people or building a business for your studio, then you will want to check out How to Make Money Producing Music Virtual Recording Studio. Daniel's going to tell us all about it on the interview, and he also has a killer offer for you later in the show that you don't want to miss. So stay tuned for the jam session to find out more. Please welcome our guest, Daniel Grimmett. Daniel, are you ready to rock, my friend? Yeah, let's do it. So Daniel, I've done my best to introduce you. Can you tell us more about who you are in your own words? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I started, you know, like most people just playing music and performing in bands. And it was sort of my dream to play music with my friends when I was adult. And I've I've figured out how to do that. It's not in the form that I thought it was going to be in. Um, What was your first instrument when you started? Sure. So technically it was drums, although I quickly... Um, went to guitar for some nice. reason. Although a lot of like the best engineers I know are drummers. So I don't know why I switched, but I did. And, uh, which is okay. Cause it led more, you know, me into songwriting more. So totally. I started out on guitar and then eventually, you know, like kind of learned more about drums. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I just wanted to hit stuff first and I was like, okay, maybe we'll, fun. maybe we'll be a real musician and try that out. But, uh, but, uh, so yeah, I started playing music and, um, played in bands throughout high school. And I think the similar story to a lot of people, I'd started recording because, well, we couldn't afford to go record in a studio or we kids. So I think when I was like 14, maybe I got my first, uh, it wasn't quite as vintage as some of the, the other guests on the show, but it was a Tascam eight track was a digital one though. Nice. Um, before moving into the, to the computer stuff. But when I was like uh, 16, I, I started recording clients like paying clients, not much, you know, maybe $50 a song. So I don't know. It, it, I started with like, okay, this is like going to be a business thing. Um, so that, so that was cool. So I was off and on doing that stuff. I, I had sort of a, a, a wild, you know, wild teenage years. There'd be times where I kind of fall off the wagon and not do music, but, uh, that's awesome, man. 16. That is super yeah. young to be recording. Yeah, yeah. It was it was cool. It was my little side cash, you know. Um, I would do it on the weekends and it was t- I really had no clue what I was doing. Like, um there's a band that has a video of me. And it was like sli- slightly joking, but but still kind of funny. It's on YouTube. And it's me looking at the manual. Um, you know, just totally stoned, you know, teenager. <sighs> man, I don't even think this is for my version. Like, <laughs> I had no clue what I was doing. Like, 
I would just record. I'd get the mics up. No EQ, no compressor. I was like afraid of messing with any of that. Um, so I recorded punk bands and it sounded punk, you know, I think it was, <laughs> it worked. Um, awesome. Well, at least you knew enough to ask for, you know, money at the end and get paid for what you're doing, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I don't know what compelled me to do that, but uh, I, I had a, jo- a job since I was 13. I started working ice cream shops. So I think I got the concept of like, okay, you do work for people and you get paid when you do that work, you know? So after high school, I, I didn't go to college. I did kind of the corporate world. So I got into sales and marketing because I'm just not a very good student. <laughs> History has proven that. And uh, so I was like, well, I'll just go into the workforce because sales will pretty much just hire you if you can talk a lot. And I talk a lot. And uh, that sort of where most of my knowledge of, of business came from. I, I quickly kind of grew with different companies and sort of started realizing that, okay, you don't necessarily need like the education to do this. Like you, you'll learn this when you're working. And uh, I had a lot of jobs I probably shouldn't ha- ha- have had <laughs> uh, based on my credentials, uh, ac- you know, um, academically speaking. Um, I just don't know how, you know, I was like 24. I'm like, oh, I'm like senior marketing advisor of this, you know, insurance company. How did that happen? You know, wow. um, and it was just sort of from from hustling and working. So I've just I always had that in my, uh, you know, back pocket. It's just my, that but, was my story. But meanwhile, you were working a day job, learning right. how to be in the, the, the world of business and, you right. know, yeah, so there was always this the marketing, kind of, but still playing music at the same time. Yeah. So, so I kind of worked part time at this commercial recording studio called old house in, uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina, where I'm from. And it was a fantastic studio with all the equipment you dreamed of working with. And, and that was great. That's really where my kind of recording skills um, you know, sharpened. And there was one year where I did struggle and work there full time, you know, I brought in my own clients and, uh, kind of got by, but it was like the, one of the best years of my life. It was a blast. And, uh, eventually I had to go back into the corporate world, um, to, to live, but, but it was awesome. I always stayed close to working with there and, uh, working with that studio. And then in 2012, I was just worn out, was totally beat down. I'll kind of touch on that in the, the later on in the in the podcast. But I was beat down from the corporate stuff, and I was missing like, hey, I want to do like, you know, what's fun, what I love. So my mentor from that studio drove me to Los Angeles and dropped me off <laughs> to wow. have fun. <laughs> That's pretty cool, man. Yeah, and um, I guess how you know my company came about. I went to Los Angeles to work in the big studios, the rock studios, and they're like, yeah, that's not a thing anymore. <laughs> I was like, oh. That's that sucks, you know. I was, you know, East West and um, some, you know, all the big studios, and it was easy to get in and talk to them. They're like, "Yeah, we think you're awesome. You're a cool guy," but you know, we're not really like moving forward right now. Um, yet I was noticing all these home recording engineers like killing it. They're like, "Yeah, mm-hmm. my day rate six hundred bucks, so you can come work for me as an assistant." And they're working every day, and I was like, "Man," I was like, "Shoot, like well, there must be something to that." Um, so I found a kind of one bedroom apartment in Hollywood that was cool enough to like pull off as a studio. I had to decide, do I want a bed in here or do I want a studio, a uh, recording studio? So I put a recording studio in it. It was uh, kind of an old building built by Paramount Pictures. So it was wood floors and plaster walls. And I just told people that would come over. It's like, yeah, you know, it's kind of half commercial, half residential, you know, <laughs> um, because I, I didn't have a bed in there and it was enough to pass and. Um, Wait, so built by Paramount as a set item? Oh, or no, built, it was like, built you know, as a hotel who... oh, okay. in 1918 for uh, actors to stay because they were very flighty. Nobody wanted to rent houses to them at that time when they were auditioning. Maybe, maybe this was like later on, uh, 30s or something. I'm not, not sure. Um, I know the building was built in 1918. But uh, yeah, so it was a hotel. So it was a very creepy looking, like, but vibey, you know. <laughs> it looked like a you know, mental hospital, um, nice. which kind of works for a recording studio for actual home. It was a little bit like, Oh gosh, what have I got myself into? That's bizarre. So do you have the whole, whole hotel to yourself or just like, Oh, absolutely not. One, one, no, I had one something? room that cost me an arm and a leg. You wow, know? It was wow. a 12 by, it was about the size. Well, they can't see it in here, but 12 by 16, maybe. And okay, then I had a kitchen okay. off the back and a bathroom and that was it. Okay, cool. Um, 
later on, I was able to get a bigger unit in the building. I, I graduated. I pulled Jefferson's and went up to the top floor and had two rooms, <laughs> which still cost me an arm and a leg. Right, well, just to clarify um, for yeah. anybody who's listening too, uh, you know, especially somebody who's thinking about home studio and what they've got and what's required and what you need. I, it sounds to me like you're talking about you had one <laughs> single room that you were going to both live in and record in and mix in and do everything in. That's correct. And, uh, you know, here you are now. That's clearly worked for you in the long, long run as, a, as far as a place to start. Yeah. Um, it's funny. You know, Facebook does the memories thing. It shows you. So today, funny timing coming here. It popped up and showed a memories of Instagram picture I posted of my couch cushions put on the floor three years ago today. Wow. That's what I used to sleep on. I'd have the couch for the studio. <laughs> and at night, I'd pull the couch, the little cushions off. It wasn't even a real couch. It was a freaking love seat. <laughs> you know, it was tiny and curled up. And uh, pull them off on the floor, throw a sheet down. You know, on the studio computer, I'd put on Netflix and watch my movies and crash and then wake up and work. And it was That's that awesome. cycle for the first year and a half. I but. had some similar experiences <laughs> to that. I, I didn't have that at my home studio, but I used to travel a lot to do production work with bands. And I would go, you know, and this band would, they'd have an apartment in, you know, they'd have a place in St. Louis or they'd have a place in Chicago or, or New York or LA. And it was always like, you know, come on out for a few weeks. And I just, you know, here's, here's the corner, here's our pro tools rig right. in this, this, you know, we, I think we had a room that was like, you know, floor, um, 0.5 or something like the John Malkovich movie. Mm. It was like a Absolutely. basement where the ceiling was l so low that I couldn't stand all the way up, <laughs> you know, and I would like crouch down and work in there and oh, sleep man. on, sleep on some couch cushions. So I, I really empathize with you, man. Yeah. And it was my first experience like working with like so going back to like, hey, the rock band thing isn't a thing anymore, which I, you know, I didn't know. Apparently we were, I was in a bubble in Charlotte. We had just really cool rock bands. You know, the band comes in, you set it up, you use the gear you want and they play and you record it. And when I went to L.A., it was like, no, you're going to write the songs. You're going to produce. You're going to play all the instruments. You're going to do. I was like, oh, crap. You know, and it was my first introduction to pop music and kind of modern, you know, sort of relevant forms of of popular music, I guess you could call it. So I had to learn that stuff really quick. You know, um, I would work with songwriters. I think I put a Craigslist ad up for like, yeah, 15 bucks an hour, come record. And I'd get these little songwriters in and they just started asking like, Hey, do you like play all these instruments sitting around? And I was like, yeah, I mean, I can fiddle around. Well, why don't you just build the whole track? You know, cause they don't have bands. They can't afford. So I, I it kind of clicked. I was like, okay, that's the new model. Like it's all about solo artists or duos they, um, you know, in the, in the pop world, obviously if you're a rock band, you have a band, but outside of that world, it's, it's, you know, people that need the track. Sometimes they need the songwriting. Maybe they're just performers. Um, and that's when I was sort of introduced to like, okay, that's, that's what we do. You, it needs to be full service one stop. So I was doing that for writers in Hollywood and I was like, well, shoot, I wonder if there's people in the rest of the world that want this too, you know, cause I can do it here. This is all I need is my one little room. And, um, I was previously in real estate marketing where it was all just helping agents set up their websites and marketing their business. And it's so similar. It's the same thing. I was like, okay, well, I know all the elements that go into like a website that gets you work. Um, so I'll try that for the music and, uh, um, that's kind of, that's how it started. So I just used some of that website consulting knowledge from my past job and blended it with my love for music and, um, the online thing kind of took us really an accident to be quite frank. There was no planning to it. That's wild. So you, you took your web, website savvy. Now, had you seen examples of that around yourself too? Had you seen things that sort of inspired you in that way a little bit, or did you really just sort of embark on this new, new journey? It sounds like. So not so much on the website. I mean, definitely I was inspired by a lot of those, um, LA songwriter guys that were doing everything themselves. They were killer mixers. They were killer producers. They were killer players, writers. Um, and that's why I aspired to be and got pretty good at all of them. Not so much the mixing, but, uh, um, but, but the rest of it, I got a pretty good grasp on. And um, as far as the web thing, no, I had never seen that again. It was sort of just like, oh gosh, I'm in LA and my little bit of savings is running out. I got to do something quick. So it was a lot of like putting up Craigslist ads and just- That's always the best motivator, isn't it? Yeah. And, and it's funny because when I consult other producers, I tell them like, you don't have to start from desperation. Like, I don't recommend it. Let's look at how you could get a job and leverage that job, whether it's a money leverage or you're leveraging time. It gives you, you know, so I'm, I'm all about like planning it out. My story just happened to be an accident. Um, 
once I started the website, I obviously did more research and realized there were other people out there in competition and, and things like that. But before that, I didn't know it was a, a thing at all. Well, um, dude, this is a great start, man. This is really cool, cool. stuff. And I, I look forward to getting deeper into this. Absolutely. Um, would you like to start out the interview here with a little bit of an inspirational quote? Something yeah. that can, people can take home, get excited about? So this quote is allegedly from one of your other uh, guests, uh, Vance Powell, oh, by nice. way of <laughs> my my assistant who heard him say it at some I don't know, uh, hang or something. And I love it. It just make a decision. Nice. Yeah. And it applies to so many things like on the artist side, they get so caught up in like, Oh, well, you know, I have to figure out what my brand's going to be, or do I want to do this? Make a decision on my side. I do it every day. I have to tell myself, just make a decision, you know? Um, but wait a minute, what if it's not the right decision? Who knows? You know, it's better than no action at all. Um, that's what it comes down to. It just applies to so many things. Just make a decision. So many people don't do things in life just because they never start doing it. You know, What I've learned is there's just really not any rules or right way, you know, regarding the music industry, like just make a decision. What do you feel like doing right now? Like, and do it, you know what I mean? Just, just get it done. You can always refine and people are so worried. Maybe it's a judgment thing or maybe it's a self, you know, well, what if I do the wrong thing? And what if you do the right thing? (laughs) Yeah. You know, to take that further for a moment, it's almost like really the only skill set we really ever have is to be able to take something and kind of respond to it a little bit. Sure. And, and, but you make that first decision about something and then you've got something in front of you that you can begin to respond to. Right. Absolutely. Um, I think that's the toughest thing for a lot of people overthinking it, you know, yeah. uh, especially in, in music or where you're an artist. I mean, gosh, we're our own worst. Sense. So we're, we have 50 different, you know, 50 million thoughts in our head. Um, as to what is the right way to do it. And I'll draw, I'll, I still, I'm totally still guilty of this. And that's why I chose this quote, but I drive my guys that word for me nuts, you know, like one day it's like, Oh, we're doing this. And the next day we're doing this and we're doing, you know? And then once I finally like pick something, there's like, Oh, thank, thank God. You know, <laughs> yeah. I was just sick of hearing about the, all these options. We don't care. You run the company, just do what you want to do, man. <laughs> yeah. I just read a quote yesterday from Ray Bradbury where he was, talking about the same thing. It was like, don't think, think this is more about creativity too, but that still applies specifically to what you're talking about. You know, don't think thinking is the death of creativity. Just do. There is no try. There is only doing, you know, right. Sounds sounds also like a a little bit like a quote you might hear from a small green guy on another planet too. Yoda. Yeah. (laughs) Yep. Absolutely. There is no try. There was only do. Only do, yeah. All right, cool. So yeah. um, now um, you were – tell us about like an important failure point for you. I, I know that you sure. described your starting out experience as a little bit like that, but – Yeah, I would – yeah. I don't consider that so much. I think the part that got me there was that. Um, so obviously there's been a mil- million failures. I could give you, you know, four this week. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's really this roller coaster of like, oh, we're doing this, and then, oh, maybe we're not. Oh, we're doing this, you know. But I'd say the biggest one that made the biggest impact on um, my life was uh, in 2012, the the reason I moved to Los Angeles and left everything behind, you know, my my folks and high paying job and, you know, comfortable living is because I felt like I, uh, I failed myself. You know, I was just chasing money and chasing status, you know, through these jobs, because I really just didn't like myself, you know, and what I was doing. And I tried to cover it up with, oh, well, if I just have this car, though, or if I just have this position at this company, you know, yeah, we're doing it. I'm doing it. You know what I mean? But I was I was neglecting the creative side and the music and what my real passion was and what my dream, what the promise I made to myself when I was a teenager, I want to make music with my friends when I'm an adult. Nice. In whatever form that is. <laughs> Hold and, on, no, let me quote you. I want sure. to make music with my friends when I'm an adult. <laughs> there it is. I don't know if I'm an adult yet, but um, but yeah, that was probably the biggest moment. And I just like had depression. I was all screwed up. My, you know, I was 24 at the time, and my mom was just like, "What? What is wrong? Like, you need to leave. You need to go. Like, not because she wanted me to go. She's like, you, you physically, you just need to get out of here. Like, you need to leave where you grew up and go do something." Cause I was just stuck and I just, that was the realization. I failed myself. I felt, um, I was like all this 
you know, not that it was a long time, but it was like my, the past six years trying to do this corporate grind was a waste. Although it ended up not being a waste. The knowledge was good, but uh, I was chasing something that didn't exist um, where the answer was just do what you were built to do, what you were put on the earth to do. That's a pretty um, serious epiphany. And I mean, that's certainly one that I've seen and heard repeated time and time again in yeah. the entrepreneurial world where somebody finally realizes that, you know, the, the, the corporate environment or job that they're working so hard towards is just doesn't represent where their passion is. And yeah. ultimately that you just have, have to sort of rip yourself from that fabric of that and jump in with both feet into this creative world and start something and sure. really build it up. But clearly, you know, it, it worked for you. Yeah. And for me, it's like, and I tell people this, like, I had no issue working for people. Like my whole thing was, you know, you hear a lot of like, oh, leave your company and start your own thing, be your own boss. You know, it's like, well, there's a lot of tough parts to that. My thing was, I just wanted to do what made me happy. And that was make, uh, make music or, or do something creative that, that satisfy me at the time. I didn't really know hundred percent what that looked like, but it wasn't ever about like, oh, I have to be my own boss. I'd be totally happy working for a company that, you know, had shared that passion or whatever it was. I just could never find, <laughs> could yeah. find that. So I just ended up doing it my own. Um, you just created it for yourself. Right, right. So I do, I do preach that though. You know, it's not, it isn't always like you have to be your own boss to like be happy and, you know, uh, to do your passion. So I just want people to know that. Well, we'll come back to that too. You and I talked sure. a little bit about that before about the, you know, the difference between isolating yourself and working and the benefits of, yeah. of being around people. But let me, let me jump right here to asking you just, you know, a moment of real success for you. Yeah. I'm like, clearly you went through all this, you jumped in with both feet, you built something. Did you ever have a, a time where you just felt like, wow, this is really working or wow, I've made it. Or like, you just, all of a sudden you're like, you know, it felt like your hit moment. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to say that um, I've had like this aha moment, like, oh, here it is. We've made it. We've arrived. Uh, just because it literally, we have a couple of those every day as, as well as a couple of times where we're just like, oh, this is a disaster every day. You know, it's so up and down. But I'd say in general, as far as success, uh, just this year, this this entire year, so many things have happened and growth has happened. Um that I'm just like, okay, this is like a real thing. Like this is, you know, I notice people telling me now, oh, you're so successful. You're, so, you know, and I never heard that before. And to me, I'm just in the thick of it all the time. So I, I don't, I guess I don't get a lot of time to stop and smell the roses and be like, oh, okay, yeah, this is it. Cause to me, I'm always like, you know, bigger, bigger, bigger go, you know what I mean? It's just an artist thing. I think uh, we always want to we're like, okay, yeah, that was great. What's the next big thing? You know, we're always totally. trying to top ourselves. And well, you know, it's December. There's not a lot of roses out there to smell right yeah, now. Yeah, right. So. Yeah. So it's pretty much, pretty much over. But uh, yeah, there's so many little things that made up the success this year. And some of those will be revealed in the, in the rest of the talk here. Okay, cool, cool. Um, well, so tell us about some of the stuff that you're excited about right now. I mean, you've got a number of different cool things. You've got songwriting team, you've got um, how to make money online, virtual recording studio. You've also got um, the Anthemize. And then I think you may have some new things in the works, which maybe we're talking about or maybe we're not. I don't know. Well, it's funny. Like there's so like, so that's the uh, public eye stuff. There's so much stuff behind the scenes too. You know, there's like, uh, and I, I think I wrote a blog post on it or I have one ready to go. And it's how many, you know, different ways you can make money as a producer. I think it is a blog post on, on the Sorry Team blog. In the background, we have, you know, film TV sync placements, like royalties from work we're doing, stock music. Um, and, you know, so, so there's so much stuff that goes into it. But as far as what I'm excited about right now, um, the course stuff has been really cool. Um, doing the, the virtual recording studio course, how to make money producing music it was essentially just the blueprint of, you know, my first three years building the songwriting team. It's like, the exact blueprint to that covers everything from like, you know, starting the business to, to branding, um, to building the site and must have elements and what's the best site to use to actually getting the work, how to manage your client. There's so much that goes into running a business and there's no like business school for 
producer or mu- musicians or, or a lot of creatives nowadays. Um, yeah, well, there's a reason for that, right? I thought that when you choose to go into the artistic world, you're just supposed to live a life of being broke and destitute. Isn't that, <laughs> isn't that the message that we get? Yeah, you could. I mean, <laughs> well, it's funny. No, you know, what the popular message I see, obviously in the uh, you know, education is a big business is that, yeah, you can do it. You can make it, but then you go to the recording school, the music school, um, and not to talk bad about them because they do a lot of stuff and they say, yeah, you know, it's the internet age and you can do so much stuff with you, but then they don't actually sh- tell you how to do it. You know, it's like, okay, that's great that this concept and theory exists. And I know that we get to, you know, do Q and A's with like the top 10% of guys, but what about just like the middle class, like people doing this, you know, they most of the recording school, they probably just don't know, you know? Um, you know, I went to school. So. I, I was at a, I went to a full college course. Uh, well, I wasn't there for four years cause I already done some of my coursework, mm-hmm. but uh, two and a half years and got a degree in, in a bachelor's of science and recording. And they never taught how to, you know, the DIY aspect of building your business and, and doing all that. I learned stuff about the way the industry worked at the time, which has right. totally changed. So there wasn't as much of the DIY attitude back then. But I agree. I mean, I think it's remarkable that you're creating, you know, you've done it. And I I mean, like, honestly, three years, like, tell, talk, talk to us about that. I think that might seem um, a matter of fact for you, but I think for us, it's remarkable that you built an online virtual recording studio that, that has been so successful in three years time. Can you talk about your success in that time? Yeah. So the, the, Three years. So, so kind of how it grew so quickly. And this is sort of just a side note kind of business, you know, thing. This applies to anything. A lot of people As- assume nothing here. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to us like we're five. Um, okay. So, one of the, the first tasks is obviously like getting clients and like making a living, you know, and that's a big task. Once you accomplish that in the, in the music industry, or recording or industry, or whatever it is. Um, that's a big accomplishment. That's great. And I know a lot of guys who have busted their tails and got to that, but then they kind of stop there for whatever reason. They don't know where it goes from there or they just, they're comfortable there or whatever. And that's completely cool. But coming from like the corporate world, it was always just in, and more, more specifically startup, you know, where I'll work for a lot of startups. So it was always just growth, 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 growth. You know what I mean? So the moment I had just enough to, bring someone else in. I did, you know, and a lot of people are scared to do that. My a year and a half into it, I gave half my company away to a partner. Wow. So you started out doing everything yourself, everything myself. And and let's, let's just remind everybody, you started out in a single room, Yep. discovering Mm -hmm. what it was that was needed, you know, thinking it might've been one thing and then going, Oh wow, people really want this instead. Right. Right. Um, so yeah, it was just like volume, you know, I was like getting a lot of inquiries and stuff. And it got to the point where, where it was like, okay, do I just like take less work and sort of stay where I'm at? This is cool. I can make a good living doing this. This is fine. But I don't know. I wasn't satisfied. I, I've had a lot of times throughout this where I'm like, you know, I'm like, ah, well, this isn't really the right answer either. <laughs> it's like you get something you think you want and then you're like, oh, well, that's not really it either. You know, I'm doing music full time, but you know, I'm kind of bored and by myself and, uh, you know, there's just so much stuff and I'm just working all the time. And this, this actually kind of blows. I don't, I don't dig it. Uh, it's taken away from some of the creative aspect or I feel stuck. I felt that stuck feeling and I'm more scared of being comfortable than I am of being risky. Um, and I think that's why it grew so quickly. The comfortable, you know, being comfortable actually sort of scares me. That may change as I get older, but, uh, at this time, like I equate that feeling of comfort with, discomfort actually like oh gosh i'm stuck like this is it you know um i've peaked it's over <laughs> so um i just immediately like made quick risky growth decisions that fortunately worked out and haven't got screwed yet um so i gave half the company away to a partner that partner is an incredible producer way better than me and uh because of that it tripled our work in the first in the next year so that was year two and then this year year three we uh said well screw it. Let's get it. Let's hire another writer. Let's dive into some other income streams. We spent a lot of money on that instrumental marketplace Anthemize. We have a partner on that and we just kind of went for it. It was like any money we were kind of making, we'd keep a little bit for ourselves and have fun, but we just basically put it back into building more sort of uh, spokes of 
the business. So it's been this nonstop, like, let's go big, let's go big, let's go big. Um, so I think that's why it grew so, so quickly. Um, well, let me, let me, uh, I just, these questions are coming to mind right now, but I wonder if I could ask you to share with us, um, you know, maybe a couple of examples of what is an awesome potential for something like this. What are a couple of examples of what could happen after, you know, really putting in the hard work and building it up and taking it someplace really cool, something that's pretty exciting, and then flip it back and maybe give us a couple of examples of what you could do, some of which you may have already shared, right at the beginning when you're just getting started on this journey. I would say that being able to consider earning $100,000 a year and moving up even from there as a business, that's pretty exciting. Yeah. You know, some people yeah, might sure. hear I mean, that. The potential and, is really like just what you got in you. Like, what is your goal? What do you want to get to? You can do whatever, you know, um, whatever you, you want. I mean, some the, your potentials will they'll change. Maybe a lot of the listeners now, maybe their first potential is like, well, I just want to make like I just want to get my first paying client. And that's yeah. absolutely a potential for this. And then someone else may say, I've got a couple of clients, but I actually want to make this my full time gig. That's absolutely a potential um, and then you may have people that say, well, you know, I'm kind of in that, you know, I do this for a living, but um, it's, it's kind of plateaued or whatever, or it's some months are tough and, and they just want to get smarter about how they're doing their business and want it to grow. And, and that's obviously a potential. I know, mean, that's can, awesome, dude. I mean, yeah, you yeah. said it yourself. I know for, for me, my experience when I first started, I was so thrilled to get $50 a day yeah. to be working <laughs> on a record. I thought it was the Cool. Best thing in the world, you know. I was so excited, and you even talked about your beginning, and it was like you. I don't think we were at that place where we could conceptualize a hundred thousand dollars. You know, I just that mm. just seemed so far away for me at the time. And I think you know a great takeaway for anybody who's listening is that to connect that. Yes, when you're you can start out looking at fifty dollars and thinking that's fantastic right now, and know that down the road is real success for you. And there is a roadmap for it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And my guest yeah. on the show today here, <laughs> Daniel Grimmett, has he's been down that road and he's he's seen and all the different ways and the things that it takes to put together a business successfully and grow it and turn it into right. something really, really truly remarkable. And um he's here to share that with the, you. The money side of of the thing is is interesting. Um and that also comes down to like goals. There's some people that just really don't care about, you know, and I'd say I care a little less than I did, you know, in my first year, I was like, Oh yeah, this is awesome. Like I'm killing it. Da, da, da. And then I realized it again, like, okay, well it doesn't really change my life like that much as far as happiness. You know, it was just kind of, sometimes it was there. Sometimes it wasn't, I was just passionate about getting the business off the ground. Um, well, you, you mentioned the word goals. So you're, you're, are you a goal setter? Yeah, but it's not really finance goal. Like at this point, it's just like, yeah, it, you know, we're a small company. Um, but if, if, if we're doing, you know, this year we'll end somewhere around a couple hundred K, but it takes that to kind of run a company of our size right now. Not that we're big, but that's, you know, so as we grow, I'm sure there will be more money because that's just what it takes to operate as it grows, it, it's kind of more correlated to that than it is anything else. So it seems like a lot to maybe like a listener. Just like, Are you kidding me? You know, but it's like, well, it costs money to run a bit. And it's just, you know, um, it's, it's sort of in baby steps. It got to that, yeah. to that point. It really doesn't like feel any different to me. Like doing the accounting, it's just like money in money out. You know, we pay our guys, we pay ourselves. We're always, you know, getting new equipment or you know, paying marketing company or whatever. It, it's, it's such a like intangible thing, honestly, that when I look at the books and I'll show through the course, you know, here's like our PayPal account or whatever. I'm like, Oh shit, we did do that. You know, that money did come in that, you know, we did 40 K that month. That's pretty cool. But during it, it doesn't really feel yeah. like it necessarily. But it's probably a good feeling to know that you know what you're going to be doing next. Even if you even if you still have to go through that difficult decision making process, yeah. you know that tomorrow, next month, you know at the end of it's, the year, you're going. This is your business. This is, you've got this is your job. The coolest thing for me is, I mean, we're still everybody in the company is pretty young. So there's definitely times where we'll like splurge on money and do kind of stupid stuff with our personal money we get but i'd say the biggest like actual like exciting part for me from the money side is that if i have a cool idea or i want to do this new course or create you know go to a studio for a week and create fun drum samples or something 
we can do it. We have the money to do it. If I really want to hire this marketing team to work with me and, and do that stuff, we can do it. We're able to do it. So that's, it's cool. It, it, it gives you a little bit more, uh, you know, room to grow and try ideas as where when you don't have that income, it's kind of, it's more strenuous. You got to really choose which idea you're going to go with because you can't afford to try yeah. all of them and some will work and some won't. Well, um, just since pe- our listeners aren't seeing us here and, you know, talking to each other, mm-hmm. I'm going to describe you a little bit to him. So oh. Daniel is definitely <laughs> like, you know, he's standing here with me. He's got tattoos on his forearms. He's, he's definitely rock and roll background. He's dressed rock and roll. He's very much a rock and roll dude, and I will tell you that he drove up in a very nice car. So this is <laughs> this is a very true thing that you know the the level of success you've achieved. So I I congratulate you on that. I but more that. importantly, let's flip that back around and sure. let's talk about the reason you're here. So you know, um, rock stars, Daniel's created this amazing course for you that actually teaches you how you can do this. Can you talk more about yeah. the, the course? And that sort of goes back on like what you asked me what I'm excited about now. And the, it obviously, it sounds like a total cop. I was like, yeah, you're on this podcast with this course. Of course, you're going to say it's the most exciting <laughs> thing right now. Um, but uh, you're not just but, here to brag, right? Yeah, no, no. It's, it's, it really has been cool because my background is doing consulting with other businesses and real estate agents and helping them build their business. And I love that. I would have stayed in it if the companies. I, you know, if I wanted to stay with those companies, uh, it wasn't the job itself. It was other factors. I love helping people because it gets me out of my own head and my own business, you know, cause I'm always in a whirlwind, you know, it, it occupies my mind 24 seven. So I think it's the funnest thing in the world where I can, you know, jump on a Skype and chat with, you know, production company in Amsterdam about their business and what they're doing and, that's just really fun for me, I think, because it takes me out of my own company. I don't have to worry about my company for an hour. I can have fun and with someone else's. And uh, so that's what I have been excited about. It's not just for fluff. It, it actually has been cool. So kind of the first part of that is I made this course just to uh, just as a fun project, you know, um, this is before I knew anything about audio blogging or like actually had to get it into people's hands. I was just like, I want to do this. Like, this is my little like thing I'm leaving to the world. You know, something were to happen to me. <laughs> Here's how it did it. Even for my guys that work for me, like here it is, you know, if you need to know. But yeah, it's cool. It, it really, it's not the most like exciting thing in the world as far as, you know, it doesn't get as much like leverage as all the cool mixing tutorials and all that stuff. But well, there may be an element of uh, work involved in it. And that might oh, be part imagine of that. Yes, there is. There, right? It's very real. I know there's a stigma with business courses like, oh, this is, you know, bull crap. But it's not bull crap. It's actually hard. <laughs> it's really hard. And like even in the first section, there's lectures in there where I'm going to try to talk you out of it. And uh, sometimes I'll get, you know, refund requests. And that's what happens. They get to that third lecture. I'm like, yeah, here's the reality of like what it takes to really do this in the beginning. And Peter's like, nope. And they're like, can I have my 30 day, you know, money back? I'm like, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. People are looking for uh, a magic, you know, trick the magic that, pill. That yeah. All, yeah. All work perfectly. But um, we were talking about that too. And it's just, he, what's remarkable to me is that yes, it takes hard work mm-hmm. and yes, you can choose what you want to do in life. You know, there's an element of just, just, figure out what's important to you. What do you want to do? And then build it around that. And what I've learned is that it doesn't matter what you choose. It's going to be hard work. Absolutely. And But what's so cool about what you've created with this course is, yeah, it's going to be hard work, but wouldn't you like to know that when you're putting in all this hard work, you're actually on the right path? Yeah. On a path, yeah, on yeah. A path that that's slightly or, more proven than some others, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or have or have some guidance, right? That, and like, that's what's cool about you know the path kind or the I'm sorry the course does lay out that path, and then when some some of the students decide to opt in to to hiring me for a Skype consultation, that's kind of neat because then it's like okay, you know the basics, so let's talk about what your what why are you special? What do you do? Is it well, I can, I'm the best like metal drum editor or, you know, I've heard it all. Like people have these cool sort of niche, you know, things that they fit into. And then we can get more one-on-one with like, oh, that's interesting. So you write in f- music in four different languages. You write, lyrics. okay, that's huge. Like if we could, we can, ang- we can make an angle for that. We can market that. And uh, so that's been fun. So the course is great for 
the stuff that you just need to know. And then past that, know that everybody's going to be different and have their own little way of doing things. Some stuff's going to be more, you know, social media driven. Some stuff may be more local driven. It just really depends on what they're doing. But I'll say, I think the biggest thing for any creator, music producers, recording engineers, and even musicians, because, you know, musicians have to be business people nowadays, is that if you're not into the business stuff, I get it. It's probably so annoying that you have to do that now, you know, and I, I get that. So with this course, it's like, yeah, it's it's a lot of information and stuff that may not be as exciting to you as um, some of the creative, you know, mixing courses. But once you know it and just kind of get into your head it makes all the business stuff kind of less of a task. You get to learn how to automate it and uh, you actually will spend less time on that crap and more time on, you know, your work and your creativity because you have these tools in a place where you just wake up in the morning, somebody a email comes in. Hey, I want to, I want to work with you. or I need the song mix. And you're just like, cool. You know, every day when we wake up, there's somebody that wants to work with us and we've just turned that on, you know, through, through the, how, you know, how we do things and what I show in the course, we've turned that on and um, I don't have to worry about all this junk because I have tools that like, okay, so-and-so needs a phone call and then, you know, we need to get him his update for his project. I don't have to spend a lot of time on that stuff. It's, it's automated so that we can actually have fun working on the project and collaborating with that client. That's very cool. And I also want to point out something, a thing that I learned about myself after a while, I kept getting gear and I would connect it. And then I'd, you know, computers make the software experience a little bit more streamlined now than they used to be. It used to be far more complex to get two apps talking to each other and things working. And I kept finding myself hooking things up and connecting it and everything and thinking like, oh man, when I get this connected, I'm going to write the next best song, you know, and then I wouldn't write the song. (laughs) And then next you know, month or whatever, I'd be connecting something else. And finally, one day I realized I was like, oh, maybe instead of self beating myself up for this, maybe I need to acknowledge that I I think I just like connecting stuff, you know, like conjunction junction. And, you know, what was that at Sesame Street? Um, You know, like I I like hooking up words and phrases in the studio, you know, but the point is what's so cool about the business and the online stuff is when you start to get it, when you start to learn it, man, it's not a pain. It's fun. It's intense. Yeah, it's like it connecting together. stuff in the studio. It's like learning how to put a mix together. You begin to get excited about learning how to operate your online business, right? Yeah. I think like as it becomes like your business and you start making a living, like you sort of, it's, you get a little bit more excited about the business stuff because you know, that's what fuels, you know, this whole thing that what you get to do what you love to do for, for a living. So I think it's become slightly more exciting to the people that are just starting off. They're like, Oh my gosh, you do not want to go through this. So, right. which I get, um, I absolutely get it. But, uh, well, let me describe something that when you're starting out feels like the biggest pain in the butt. I remember it. So you do work for someone and they're like, okay, cool. Yeah. If you could just send an invoice to so-and-so <laughs> to get paid and you're like an invoice, <laughs> What's that, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so I totally know what it's like to start out and not want to think about any of the business side. You just want to have fun and play, but right. it comes and it's and it's easier and easier and it and it starts to, it's really satisfying when it becomes part of the thing that makes it all work, you know, the yeah. creative stuff and the music. I think nowadays it's more common to like people clients, potential clients expect you to be a little business savvy and I think Um, it's just because they want to feel comfortable. They have so many options now that they can choose. So what having a little, um, business savvy allows you to do is you don't have to be the best producer, the best recording engineer. They're just going to work with you because they feel like comfortable and maybe you're the best too. That's, that's fine. But, uh, if they could have somebody that's just incredible, but can't talk to them, has issues sending files or following up or, and it's just like, after a while, they just get annoyed with it. And they're like, oh, well, you know, maybe this guy has a slightly different sound, but at least he just like runs his own, manages his own life. Right. And I just, I don't yeah. have time. Artists yeah. don't have time to like screw around. And so I think it's a little bit more respected nowadays. They actually prefer you to have a little bit of business uh, savvy to an extent. To yeah. Extent. So you're reaching out through the internet to build your business, but ultimately it's still a relationship thing. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, uh, and if you're good at it, this happens, people will start flying out to you. I mean, just this week, we had a client down from New York and we have a client down from Seattle. 
um, which we're in Nashville right now for people that you know, don't know. Um, so it's pretty far away, you know. Uh, February, we have somebody coming down from New Jersey and from South Korea, which will be the, they'll take the cake for farthest traveling. That's awesome. So you build these relationships online. It doesn't always stay online. There's some people, because the online collaboration process is, you know, there of course is some limitations to it, you know, and you got to decide like which one of my services is best for this. Is it mixing? Cause I don't necessarily need them to be here or what can I offer? Um, but you establish these relationships with it and with them. And by that point, they don't care. They'll travel. They, it's not about convenience for them anymore. It's about the value of them working with you. Um, so that's been cool. Well, that's cool. And, and then, um, I'm going to talk about one more topic sure. related to that before let's go into telling our listeners rock stars, how they can right. find out Absolutely. more. And, and you, you have a special offer for them that we do. don't, you guys will not want to miss. But the idea of building a business and expanding it in the reach, the potential of reach that happens over the internet versus trying to do it locally. Um, right. You know, locally, you could build yourself a studio. You could, uh, you know, have this, invest a lot of money into a space. You could spend a lot of money building Absolutely. out a studio that might follow sort of a tradi traditional look to and feel to it and might be reaching to a local audience you yet you're limited by the extent of your reach you know there's yeah. you may live in a place where there's only so many bands that you can record and stuff talk for a moment about that versus what it is to have an online business and be able to reach the world right that's what's cool about it is that you can have just a little room in Hollywood. Nobody knows you have just the iMac and a little, you know, interface and a couple of guitars and that's it. Cause it doesn't matter. They just want result, you know, and if you can do that result, so the, so that the overheads, I see it as just an awesome thing because it's a business where you have a higher potential income and lower expenses. Like, hello, you know, <laughs> you might know anything about margin. That's, that's the way to do it. You know, uh, it costs you way less to run the business yet. There's more potential for more income. So that's kind of, yeah, it's, it's, it's the reach is huge. And again, there's ups and downs to do an online thing, but, but as far as amount of clients, that's not one of the downs. That's one of the Definitely well, one of the pros. Just so it turns out that there's ups and downs to doing every yeah, version true. of business. That's right. True. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, so that's totally awesome, man. Thank you so much for telling us sure. all about this and, and getting us excited about it because it's really super cool. I mean, look, like, honestly, I love all the opportunities that are out, out there for learning about plugins and mixing and mm -hmm. recording and production and all this stuff. But ultimately, unless it's strictly a hobby for you, if you want to do this for a living at all or you want to even fund itself – then there, you know, in comes the business aspect of it. And this is the best thing that I've seen for teaching you that, you know, coming from a real world individual like yourself, who's been through all this, turning around and sharing it with us is super cool. So tell us, where can we find this? Now, you, you had a special offer you wanted to talk about. I'll let you sure, tell us Sure, sure. So for the uh, Recording Studio Rockstars, so typically this course, I'll tell you a quick rundown. It's, it's a big course. It's six hours of HD uh, video lectures, some some text lectures, but probably 90 percent video. And it covers literally everything from starting the business to now you're like transitioning from a freelancer to hiring people. If that's your goal, you know, it's it's every literally every step of it from the web design part. To the, so it's it's jam packed and it's just the blueprint. It's it's every step of the way. I just kind of vlogged it and what was I doing this year and next year and next year. And that's what it is. So it's very cool. So it is typically a hundred dollar product. The coupon uh, code or special offer is going to be 40% off. So almost half off. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah. I figured I just, like I told you, I just go for things. You're just giving it away. <laughs> um, just giving it away. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, for the folks that don't do the work, they'll just ask for the money back. But, um, but for the ones who really want to do it, I do want to give them a fair shot to, to make it happen. And maybe they have just don't have a lot of extra income right now. And uh, hopefully at least inspire them to say some in the early, early lectures like, OK, maybe I need to get a better job so that I can make this happen. So for some of those guys, hopefully this inspires you. So 40 percent off. You can access the virtual recording studio course or all of our products at songwritingteam.com slash shop S-H-O-P. And just type in RS Rockstars on checkout, and that'll knock off 
I'll just set it up for all the products. If you want to try other things, go for it. Dude, that is awesome. That's yeah, so generous. That's right. and, and I thank you and the rock stars. Thank you. So oh, thanks cool. for that. No Appreciate it. Um, yeah. Awesome. Well, Guys, please remember to go check that out. And RS Rockstars is the coupon code that gets you the freaking forty percent discount. <laughs> is that the best that Daniel? I win for That's all the so guests? Awesome. Did I win? That's great, man. It's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. And of course, I'll include links to all of this in the show notes. And then just a reminder, if you're listening to this right now and happen to be in the podcast app on your iPhone, all you have to do is just zip up this episode that's playing right now. And if you just touch the Recording Studio Rockstar's logo, that will zip up and you'll see the show notes right there. And so you can actually just press the link there and you can get directly to stuff. But remember, go uh, when you go there and you decide to purchase this, uh, if you do that, just use RS Rockstar's at the coupon code and you will get the yep. discount. And that's going to apply to everything that's on there. So not just the virtual recording studio course. Nice, nice. And yeah. there's some cool stuff. So yeah. go check it out. All right, cool. We're going to take a moment break and we'll be right back in time for the jam session. Hey everybody, it's Lid Shaw, and I want to thank you so much for listening to this episode of Recording Studio Rockstars. I really appreciate you, and I really appreciate your time. And as a way of saying thank you, I've created a special mix tutorial just for you, Rockstars, totally free, called the Mix Master Bundle. With it, you get over two hours of detailed videos watching over my shoulder as I mix a song in my studio. Plus, I give you the free ebook that explains how I recorded the tracks and you get downloadable multi-tracks so that you can practice your mixes, including the Pro Tools session file, using nothing but stock plugins in Pro Tools, all of which you would find in any other DAW, whether you're on Logic or Studio One or Reaper. Maybe you're struggling with trying to improve your mix technique, or maybe you just simply don't have access to multi-track files or can't record a full drum set in your studio. I wanted to give you a chance to create your own mixes from full drum drum kit, bass, and guitars recorded in my studio. The song is called American Winter, and it's off my instrumental record, Skadoosh, and it's all available for you totally free right now. All you need to do to get it is text Mix Master Bundle to 33444, and I'll send it directly to your email. Again, that's Mix Master Bundle with no space to 33444. 444, or you can go directly to mixmasterbundle.com, enter your email, and I'll send all the files directly to you. Thanks so much, rock stars. We'll see you guys in the jam session. Cheers. Hello, rock stars. We're back, and I'm here with Daniel Grimmett. Daniel, how hey, are you? Hey, what's up? And uh, we are ready to jump into the jam session. J Daniel, are you ready for the jam session? It's jam, man. Sweet. All right, man. First question. When you were getting started, what was holding you back? What was the big struggle for you? So, uh, so it sounds kind of silly, but let's be honest. When I was a teenager, that's when I first started getting into it. I had a... Uh, uh, substance abuse <laughs> issue so my biggest problem was actually hanging on to gear i'd get stuff and then you know sell it to fund other uh oh, no. other things and just keeping gear around to actually get my job done was the unfortunate thing holding me back so i hope that not like, a lot of other people relate to that but that's the truth you and Jimi hendrix didn't he always have a his guitar was in the pawn shop when he needed it for the right. gig kind of thing yep absolutely sorry if that's wrong jimmy I don't know if you'll get an answer on that. <laughs> I think that's done, but unfortunately. But yeah, that was probably the biggest thing holding me, but yeah. obviously knowledge and stuff like that. But my, honestly, my most immediate thing was I couldn't hang on to equipment because I just had other unfortunate habits at the time. Right on. All right. Well, so um, sorry to hear about that. Glad you kicked them. Glad oh, yeah. you made it past <laughs> that. Um, so next question, tell us what was some of the best advice that you received when you were uh, you know, starting or anywhere along the way? Sure. So when I started working at like Old House, um, the studio in Charlotte, first commercial studio. So coming from being a home recording guy, I was just ready to get my hands on all the all the gear, you know, tape machine, actually the same tape machine you have in here. Um, all the preamps, all the mics, blah, blah, blah. So I think my first sessions, I did like the L.A. thing where there's like 400 mics on the drums and uh, sound like crap, you know. And my men mentor told me, he's like, hey, man, like I know you like the gear and like all that stuff, but don't forget about the song do what's best for the song. And once I kind of actually got that in my head, which is probably like a year after that, I finally got into my head. I was just like, 
Cool. What drum sound do you want for this? Yeah, we're thinking of Roth. Cool. Um, two mics. Throw it up. Does that sound like what you want? Yep. Awesome. Let's move on to making this song great. You know. So yeah, just just don't forget that it's it's about the song. At the end of the day, you can tweak synth sounds and sound designs and make the coolest DJ drop ever. Whatever you do, or spend a million you know years trying to mix it to perfection. But don't forget about the song. I like it. Yeah. It turns out later on, you found out that the song was kind of the only thing that really mattered. Yeah. Right. I yeah. Mean, it wasn't about, yeah. It wasn't yeah, about all that fun. gear. Yeah. It's fun. Um, it gives us something to talk about in forums. Well, but. let me ask you this question for your online virtual recording studio. Mm -hmm. Do you have to have an analog tape machine? <laughs> no, you don't. There you go. No. no, actually it probably wouldn't be a good thing. Do you have to have a vintage 48 channel Neve mixing console? You do not. Wow. You do you have not. to have, a, I don't know how much they are right now, $25,000, $30,000 um, Telefunken Elam 251 microphone? Nope. Sure don't. Really? Sure don't. Incredible. Most of the time they're doing their vocals somewhere else. We don't have to worry about that. So how much it. money did we just save ourselves right there yeah, by taking those 100K. things off the list? That, you save yourself 100K. That's how you make 100K <laughs> yeah, first exactly. year. <laughs> just don't spend it, right? Just don't spend it. Awesome. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get into recording software coming up here. Yeah. All right, cool. So next up, share with us a recording tip, hack, or secret sauce. Okay. So you're going to be mad at me because it's not actually a recording. It's more of a business thing. But uh, follow up, following up, that's if, if I could say one thing that's like, what's the biggest part of what you do on a daily basis that makes your business successful and allows you to record full time, which you know, I'll tie it back into recording there, following up, someone reaches out to do, want to do a gig with you, they're interested in talking, you'd be so surprised how many people just drop the ball, maybe they'll respond once, you should basically haunt that person until they work with you or tell you to screw off, you know? So follow up is my, that's my hat for really doing this right. Dude, that's hard to do, man. It is hard. No. Well, yeah, it's, it's discipline, but like, there's like 40 million softwares that just basically tell you call this person today, you know? That's All right. A, can that's you, can you share with us one um, tip about following up right now? Yeah. Um, use like a CRM software, which um, like uh, Insightly, all it is is like a contact book with tasks assigned that say, hey, in two weeks, I need to follow up with Johnny to ask him if he still wants to book that studio time. Okay. It takes two seconds. And the toughest part about it is just staying consistent with it. It's easy to like do it in the first month and you kind of like, oh, I don't have time to go in there and mess with it. But um, yeah, like we always have a ta some kind of task open for everybody we've worked with, whether it's call them in a year. You know what I mean? You'd be so surprised because then you don't have to do anything. You're just like, oh, I'm going to take today and like follow up with these three people that talked to me, you know, four months ago, that band that we were. And all of a sudden, like five minutes of work and one of those clients is actually like, oh yeah, glad you reached out. Let's do it. You're like, wow, well, that four minutes of work made me four grand. And I, I didn't That's have to do awesome, anything. That's awesome, man. So, I love that tip. So what was of, it you said? Insightly was a good one? Yeah, Insightly is a great CRM. There's there's a lot of them, but uh, Insightly we use. Uh, I talk about Insightly in the course because it also has great uh, project management for keeping up with like what step of the pro, you know, what step you're at in the project and some other things. So. Um, and what is, what is CRM? Customer relationship management. Is it? Or contact? Re yeah, you might be right. Customer. Customer relationship you, Somebody's management. got to fact check. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so yeah, if you heard that term go by quickly, that's all it means is that it's a place that keeps track yeah. of all your contacts for you and helps you keep right. it all organized. Right. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Contact or customer. Sweet, man. That is a killer yeah. tip. And again... It's You're going to so get much better. Recording tip. Yeah, but it is because we we all get better at recording the recording more recording tip. tip more recording we do. Yeah, absolutely. More distortion. When in doubt, more distortion. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> That's one that always works. Nice. When I do have to comment um flipping through and listening to your your SoundCloud and hearing the work you guys are doing. Man, it sounds awesome. I appreciate it. It's, it's so, it's you know, time. It's like you talk about more distortion. It has that quality of being like very in your face and sound great. I dig that. Cool. We hire really good mixing engineers. <laughs> good, good, good. <laughs> That's a big part good, of it, good to move. be honest. <laughs> Sounds cool beforehand, but the mixing engineers really, really That's do awesome. a good job. So. All right. So now, um, how about a favorite hardware tool, something you really like to use? Yeah. So I got to say the biggest thing that just uh, I think is awesome, me and my guys are all about like the future of stuff. So we don't, you know, it's fun having a lot of equipment. So that's kind of neat, but practical, you know, being practical for us, is just not a 
thing. It's almost like more stuff is more of a like less freedom <laughs> of all this crap. I love the universal audio stuff. You know, it just sounds so yeah. great. We sold all of our outboard gear. We have one box, our laptops. We plug in the laptop. We can travel somewhere. We can go somewhere. We have the big, you know, the the little twin, I guess, the little desktop one, and then of course like the big boy kind of eight P one or whatever uh, with the eight preamps and. Um, it's awesome. That sort of ties into software too, because I'm, it's good because they make software yeah. that yeah. that's kick ass and sounds pretty damn close to the real, a uh, close, close enough for me to not buy the real stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think that's awesome because for us, it's, it's about getting the job done good, but also there is a time factor, you know, it's the internet. People want things quick and, uh, it allows us to do it without sacrificing quality. Yeah. Um, and I just love that stuff. So. Um, are there a couple of favorite plugins, something that you seem to use a lot from you? Sure. So me personally, I'm, I'm nowadays kind of more on the business side of it. Uh, but, uh, Christian, my production partners in the, in the trenches, obviously like your classic stuff. So like the 1176, the LA2, that stuff just sounds so great. I think the coolest thing, okay. The coolest thing, the unison pre's, the preamps that, uh, so basically it models the, I guess, input sections of these preamps, the Neve, and there's a, believe an SSL one and like, I guess like the universe, like the six tens, you right, know, I guess right. the whole console kind of tube pre's and that's just awesome. That's cool. <laughs> Are I mean, you kidding me? Cause it sounds so good. I guess the, the API one too, maybe it's like, yeah, instantly you have like this API knee, you know, and we have eight of them in any arrangement and it sounds close enough for us. Yeah. And, uh, so that obviously gets used on everything we record. And it's that's funny. Cool. It's, it's remarkable because, it. you know, conceptually, how do you have a pre when you've already used the pre to get into the computer, yeah. but it's all about emulating what those, you know, right. imperfections of, of the original mic pre's and the, the EQ curves. Well, and distortions I guess it has something about like when it is coming in, it's screwing with it. It isn't quite all after I think. Right. Right. That's right. Cause the universal audio head. does that where you can record through the different elements. Right. It's not like a, right? yeah. It's not like a thing. Like you record through the thing, through the, interfaces preamps then put this knee thing on it's apparently doing you have to ask some more techie guest about it but uh it's apparently like processing it while it's coming that's like their whole deal that's like their the thing with those interfaces i don't know this sounds really great <laughs> and uh that's probably what gets used the most i mean it'd be hard to go through like the mo filters are really cool if i'm gonna throw just kind of a more left hand one out for like processing drums we do a lot of pop music yeah. um so like Filtering is super in right now. So the Moog filters are kick ass on it. Uh, yeah. All the reverbs are really great. Like the ocean way room things really cool for yeah. like rock drum. We work with a band that's kind of like the neighborhood that's sort of like dark rock. So it's pop stuff, but it's definitely more on the rock side and we don't track big drums or we, we literally program everything. We're programmers. Um, but it sounds awesome. I'm awesome. Like, well, glad we didn't have to spend a gazillion dollars on a huge room to make that happen. So. We're going to have to get Christian on recording soon. Yeah. Rock stars. He's, to talk he's to not about much of a talker, too. but, uh, <laughs> maybe you can be here with him. That, like, well, funny. if Christian was saying anything right now, but he would have said this. <laughs> that's how we do our tutorials. He literally shows me his like tricks and techniques and then I teach it. All right, cool. <laughs> we'll we'll find cool. out. A good It'll be way worth it. Yeah. We're willing to do difficult things to bring <laughs> great wisdom to the rock stars. Maybe on the spot. He'll. We'll go for it. All right. So here, you're going to love this one, man. Sure. Share with us a great resource for the business side of recording. Studio. Right. Yeah. So this is, I had the CRM thing down. Um, so one thing that I, that I love that helps, and you don't have to necessarily use this software to do it. Um, but there's a software called Trello. And if you like, um, list if you're like a list kind of guy like oh crap i need to get all these like i need to edit this session i need to do this or i need to mix that in a day and then i also need to send emails and i need to do a blog but you know as, as your company gets bigger there's more stuff to do so we just set up these processes so we have it's um, it's just like it looks like a whiteboard but it's on the computer um and you just have these little like almost like index cards that you move and it's funny because it reminds there's an episode of that silicon valley show <laughs> where the guy's like here, we'll make this board and you move the index card over, you know, for these yeah, programmers. I, I totally remember that. It's that. <laughs> Essentially, it's that. But I have just like a column. You can set up however you want. I have a column that's like need to do and it's all my little cards. And then I have another column working on. So when I'm working on it, I drag it in the center column. So and then when it's done, I drag it into a column that's like finished. And it, it's so simple. But man, I mean, my head's all over the place. And 
again, as your company gets bigger, you have so much stuff to do and you got to keep up with it. And I find that just a list like tangible, here's the item. Now I'm working on it. Now I'm not, it's over. You mm-hmm. know, it helps. It's called Trello. Yeah. Know? It's, it's free to start out. I know that. Yeah. And mm-hmm. there's an app for your phone. So it syncs mm-hmm. up and you can do it with groups of people. Yep. Absolutely. And I think you could potentially use something like that if you wanted to, that could be a tool for how we're going to uh, work on a record. There could be, you know, 12 songs in a record and you could have each card be one yep. of the songs. Yep. You know? Absolutely. Or, or ro- yeah. Yeah. A column. That's a song. And I'll have all yeah, the parts. You yeah. know, sometimes you're knocking out the overdubs. Should we get the bass on this song, that song, the drums, the overdub, the harmonies, whatever. Yeah. And that's say my other favorite tool is, is insightly. I like, there's a lot of different ones, but I love insightly um, because it just, it shows where I'm at in the, in each pro I can look at my company and, and say, okay, here's like the 20 projects that are open and I can see where the arrows are at and I can call my guy and say, well, Hey, how come these two projects are like stuck down here? Like, why are those not moving? Well, we're waiting to hear back from them on revisions. Uh, it just gives an awesome overview. I personally like how it's laid out and, uh, you can connect everything to everything an opportunity, uh, um, a client, a lead, a project, a, it, it can, um, link up with your accounting software. That's it's within Insightly? All within Insightly. Cool. Yeah. I'm going to have to mm-hmm. check that out. I didn't know about that one yet. Yeah, it's cool. All right. So um, here's here we're getting to the metaphysical questions now. So okay. if you were, uh, imagine that you were uh, dropped into a strange city and you're just starting out and you've got to, um, you know, start recording or building your, your studio. It pretty much sounds like your description of LA. So you might be telling <laughs> that one again. But you needed to find people and you wanted to make ends meet while you started out this whole new career of recording. What would you take for your setup? How would you meet these people and how would you make ends meet while you were doing it? Yeah, refer to the first part of, no, I've heard you obviously uh, ask this on, on to everybody on the podcast and I'll listen to it. Um, and my question Back before I answer, back, do I have internet access or not? Yes. Okay. We're in, we're in internet the, we're, access. We're golden. In <laughs> fact, we're in the future. It's fifty years oh. from now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, it would be very similar. Now, I'd probably, if I could plan it over again, maybe I'd look at. Okay, first thing I can do is let me get a gig where I can sort of leverage some time, either time or, or money, whatever it is. The two things I need to run a company. Um, you know, I'd, I'd probably plan it a little better. Obviously, I'd start by just going out and meeting local clients, getting getting people just in to hang out, because a lot of times those, you know, the online stuff takes a little while to ramp up. So um, that's how I started in LA. I started working locally. Um, then obviously, I'd start the website, have the web, and then just transition over. Uh, as far as equipment, like, is it minimal equipment? Yeah, you just start. Uh, yeah, like, technically, guitar, MIDI controller, two-channel interface, computer. Headphones. I like it, man. I like how and I like how matter of fact like that answer was. Fifty seven is anything. You didn't have to think hard about that one. Yeah, that's the kind of all we still <laughs> use. <laughs> Funny enough, like we'll we'll like have these spurts where like, oh, we need to buy the synth and these guitars and yeah. a octave guitar with a thumbs up headstock, you know, all this junk that we think we need and erodes and we just end up selling it all a month later. We're like, all Yeah, right. we don't really need all this. Uh we have, you know, was it gas, the gear? Ac- right, you know. gear acquisition syndrome. Yeah, every once in a while it happens. We're not huge gear guys. We're more software. We like the software stuff. And we'll go to town on some sample packs. <laughs> we yeah. love drum sample packs. Um, so Well, those don't actually fill up the room. They fill up your computer. Yeah, fill up the computer. Fill up a hard drive. But. It's like, that's what we use the most of. It's like we're always working. We do so many tracks that it's like, you can show them some new sounds that are cool. Go for it, you know. Um We'll, we'll probably buy them. <laughs> well, so let me ask this too. I imagine one of the important elements of an online recording studio is flexibility because you probably, I would guess you'd often have to make a move and then you get some feedback on it and then you need to easily make some changes to it, right? Uh, flexibility. Well, so we're talking about the recording aspect the of things. The collaboration. Yeah, the collaboration. Whereas, you know, if you're recording... Um, using a real Rhodes keyboard, it can be harder oh, to right. change Absolutely. that later. Yeah. Yeah. We try to use as much like it depends on the client's needs. You know, if it's more of like a demo, like it, like if they're doing a full production track, we always start kind of demoing it first. If we know they're going to want like strings and stuff, oh, Tom, one of our guys, a string guy, um, we demo everything first, say, do you like this before we dive into like doing a bunch of real instruments on it? Um, but what's cool with the virtual instruments and the technology we have is for the most part, if it's something like, well, I actually need this whole thing I have to step up. 
that could be devastating in the past. You know, it's like, okay, well, we're redoing the whole thing. Now, even some real instruments within a fine line, we can just, Christian can just go in there and bump it up a half step. and doesn't really affect the quality of the guitar or some, you know, hard tracked instrument that can't be changed with MIDI. Um, so, so yeah, yeah. it definitely makes it easier. The technology without that, I mean, it'd be, if we were trying to do it like in, I don't know, 1999, yeah, so it'd be much, <laughs> much tougher, you know, absolutely. Awesome. Well, so here comes our final question. Tell us what can a rock star or what can a listener do right now to become a rock star of the recording studio? What's, what's the single, let me ask that again. Sure. Here's the final question. What's the single most important thing that a listener could do right now to become a rock star of the recording studio? I think um, tying back to sort of my quote, like making a decision on what you want to do. Like, is it, are you going to do this or are you not going to do it? You know? And if the answer is yes, do it, do whatever it takes to make that happen, to be whatever the rock star, you know, whatever rock star the recording studio means to you, if that's be a better engineer, if it's make a living, decide what that is and do it. Yeah. And I think part of that is identifying what it is that you like. Yeah. Sometimes that's a good start, right? Yeah. And just having some kind of plan or strategy. That's it. You know, that's the difference between like the same two indie rock bands that are both great and one makes it. They they had a better plan or strategy. They just did a couple more things right accidentally, you know, because they were slightly more on a path and that's. Yeah. You know, stayed on that path too. Stayed on Willing that. to do the hard work. So awesome. Daniel, thank cool. you so much for Absolutely. joining us on Recording Studio Rockstars. One last reminder to you rock stars that um, I'll have links to all this on the show notes. Um, you can find a link in the show notes also if you just on your iPhone touch the the logo and it zips up and you see the show notes right there in the podcast player. And if you decide to go check out any of the products that Daniel's got, just use RS Rockstars as the coupon code at checkout. And he's generously decided to give us his firstborn child. No, not really. Just <laughs> kidding. He's giving you a 40% discount on everything, which is just awesome. And I, if I could just do one more thing on the, on the, yeah, please on do. the product there. So this is sort of just a side note for you know, some of you folks who are like really serious about this. So there is a couple of different purchase options for the VRS course. And uh, I just want to talk about one more kind of the middle option, which is sli slightly higher cost than the course itself, obviously, but it includes like doing a one-on-one -on -one Skype with me. And that's, that's where people are actually like going to get most of the learning. Just not that's, that the course is, huge. the course is great, but the course is, I can't teach every little different path. Cause it's so personal. This is, this is just your fundamental need to know path blended with some inspiration and, and practical knowledge. Just if there's any of you out there that are super serious in this, just consider, you may want to do that. You may have, you may have something special that you don't even know about that I'll discover. But, oh, that's like interesting. You'd be like, oh yeah, it's something I do. I'd be like, no, that right there, you could make a whole business on that. You know, yeah. the fact that you are bilingual or whatever. Um, or that I only played professional castanets. Yeah. That could be a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Easy to get some SEO key terms, probably. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. There you all go. Right, that's all well, you can call Daniel when you buy into that particular level right. of the product, and then you can find out exactly what SEO is. Yeah. Sweet. All right, Daniel, thanks so much, man. That's totally awesome. Um, again, Rockstars, I highly, highly recommend that you check this out. I will be sharing this with you in the show notes. It'll probably come to you in email as well. Um, just keep your eyes peeled for it and go check it out. Thanks so much for listening. Daniel, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. We'll see you around the studio. Cool. Cheers. Thanks so much for listening to Recording Studio Rockstars. If you enjoyed the show and want to help make it better, please leave a rating and review on iTunes to help reach more people. You can click directly over to iTunes or go to recordingstudiorockstars.com slash review for an easy explanation. And if you want more free content, all you have to do is text RS Rockstars to 33444. Again, that's RS Rockstars to 33444. And I'll keep you in the loop with articles, videos, and podcast updates. And I'll let you know about any upcoming giveaway offers, all totally free. Thanks for listening. I'm Lid Shaw, and this is Recording Studio Rockstars. Now, go make great music. Music